on love language number four. And that is acts of service. service. Yes, it is acts of service. But before we do talk about love language number four, acts of service, we want to do the recap of the previous love languages that we talked about. At least give you the name of them. You can go back and look at the broadcast and learn what they are and what they're about and Mm -hmm. how you fuel that love language of your spouse. So love language number one. When we get to your love language, give us a thumbs up. Yeah, I like that person. Give us something to let us know that you've been uh, growing from what we've been Communicate. Is that okay? Okay with me, because I'm going to do it too. All right, that's a fact. <laughs> Let's do this. All right, so love language number one is words of affirmation. All right, we needed some words of affirmation. So huh? fuel up their love tank. Yes, because <laughs> we needed to fill that thing with highest octane possible. Yeah. And that was affirmation. Being able to affirm your spouse. That's Amen? right. Being able to build them up. And we discovered that when we did that, that we would get the best out of them. Yeah. But sometimes we don't know what the love language is and we end up not filling the tank. That's right. And then they don't feel the value. Yeah. And so who recognized that it was love, uh, their love language was words of affirmation. Amen. Now another question, who recognized that it was their secondary That's good, language? Because remember, we're dealing with the primary and we're dealing with the secondary. That's so right. So some of you all listen to us speak on the words of affirmation and you found that it was your primary. That is that number one feeling that you need to be met. And then some of you are saying, I have that, Pastor, but not quite. it's not quite the emergency mm-hmm. that you're talking about. Yeah. But I have it. Raise your hand. All right, right, let's do it. You (laughs) said it the same time. I know. (laughs) Love language number two is quality time. Mm, And remember, one of the things that we said about quality time, yes, you could be sitting watching a movie together, and Mm -hmm. that could be considered quality time, but you're giving your time and attention to the movie or the television program that you're watching. So quality time is really like spending that one-on-one time Mm -hmm. with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. We did... We, we used ourselves on that one in that illustration, mm-hmm. Pastor. And I would say percentage-wise, just to be transparent with you and help you understand that it is a work yeah. in progress. You follow me? Yeah. I'd say we did about 20% better this week uh, with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. On a scale of 100 being top, and let's say we were at 50, we may be up to 70 now. We're not quite all the way up to where we need to be. I was on my iPad a little longer than I should have been this week, and I'm not going to snitch on her. So I told myself I was going to my cell phone. Amen, amen. But we're working on it, though. We're working on it. We are getting in a better position, so we're practicing what we're preaching. All right. Yes. Love language number three is receiving gifts. And Uh, if you all remember, I think I should, so I'm giving a thumbs up. That's one of my love languages. That's your love language. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I like my that. pocket knows that. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, so we're mm-hmm. right back at love language number four. And love yes. language number four, again, is acts of service. Oh, acts so, of service, yes. We want to give you the scripture of Colossians chapter 3, the New Testament, verse 23. All right, Colossians chapter 3. Verse 23, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. It says, verse 23, Whatever may be your task, work at it heartily from the soul as something done for the Lord and not for men. Amen. Um, Another translation says, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. That's right. And another thing, when we think about acts of service, and I love that scripture, that whatever we do, that we do it unto the Lord. One of the things that we need to remember also is that God loves a cheerful giver. So anything that we're doing, it's an act of giving. Okay. That if you're waiting on someone, if you're serving someone, you are doing an act of giving. And so if the love language is acts of service, you're still giving, right? Absolutely. But here, 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 this and understand this, that if our hearts are not cheerful about what we're doing, and if we're not looking at that we're doing it unto the Lord, then why are we really doing it? Mm. 
because we want to do things in love. Ultimately, faith, hope, love, but the Bible says for the greatest of these is love. So when we're doing acts of service, when we're doing acts of kindness, it needs to be done with a cheerful heart. Ooh. It needs to be done unto the Lord, and it needs to be done for what? Mm -hmm. Cheerfully unto the Lord. Yes. And because God is requiring it of us, right? Absolutely. And I want to uh, caution us. Let's not let it be acts of bothering. Yeah. That's what the Lord just hit me with when I was sitting there listening to you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Some of us, even if you understand that that's your spouse's love language, sometimes we can use that to bother with them. Mm -hmm. In other words, you just said do it as unto the Lord, right? right? But sometimes we can do it as unto to get what I want from you. Yeah, yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, I I'm do. giving you the act of kindness and service, not just because I'm doing it as unto the Lord and because I know it fulfills your needs, but because I genuinely want something from yeah, you. Yeah. And I know that giving you that act of service or kindness and service is going to to garner you doing something back to yeah, me yeah. that I actually want you to do. Yeah. And so us being spouses or uh, relatives or close relationships, we tend to know about that other person and we know how to manipulate them mm -hmm. into giving us what we want. And so sometimes it can be instead of acts of service, it can be acts of bartering. Yeah. I exchange this yeah. for this. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So again, we want to do things with a cheerful heart. We want to do things with love. And we want to always do it as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. A lot of times what will happen in marriages is that you'll find one spouse fulfilling the, the love language of this, of the spouse. But the other spouse may not be fulfilling the love language of, of what their spouse is. But even knowing that we have a responsibility first unto God mm -hmm. to still do what we know that we're required to do, Absolutely. not based on what our spouse is doing or not doing, but based on what the word says. And especially for those who are believers, who are in the body of Christ, there may be someone who is watching this broadcast and may say, hey, none of this makes sense to me at all. But at the end, when we get an invitation, for you to make Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have a better understanding. Absolutely. But I hope this is being plain and simple that you are gaining some knowledge. Amen. Amen. So when we look at acts of, were you going to say something, no. Pastor? No. So when we look at acts of service, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. We look at um, doing things that you know that your spouse would like. Uh -huh. And so um, I could talk about how. <laughs> One of the things that I like an act of service that I that I love for my husband to do is to take out the trash. Especially when you see it overflowing, where somebody might be saying, Well, Pastor Shelly, you can take out the trash. I can and I do. But I'm also doing other things. If I see you busy and doing other things, I'll be like, Kobe, do you see the trash? It's spilling over like that. I said, Maybe when you was growing up, that was like your little pet peeve. You go, that was like your chore. So now you like hate doing it. But anyway. Here, but that ain't what's happening. <laughs> but but what, one of the things that I can say is that when he see me start <laughs> taking it out, he's like, I got it, baby. <laughs> Thank you. We because, and that. sometimes I know she'll grab it, you know, just to make sure. I see her grab it. You know, she could have grabbed it another time, but she wait till I'm walking by and grab it up, and I go, oh. I and, and to be quite honest, you know, we all have our our hangups and our faults and such like that. But you know, sometimes you can be geared towards something else yeah. and not focused on the thing. And so what what ends up being her pet peeve, she focuses on. Does that make sense? And what ends up being my pet peeve, I focus on. Well, the trash is not my pet peeve. Um, not that I'm a dirty person, it's just that I was in the go with it. But hey, I mm -hmm. learned it. I learned it to get my eyes to draw down to the yes, overflow. Yes. You know what I mean? The overflow. The, the overflow. And look, y'all, sometimes y'all can lay it right here. I be saying, Kobe, you don't smell that trash? Oh, I know you smell that trash because I'm smelling it. <laughs> All right, so it's um, the acts of service is what it's doing things that you know your spouse would like, like Amen. taking out the trash, yeah, taking out the trash, washing the dishes, mm -hmm. 
Um, perhaps if one spouse has wash the clothes or laundry the clothes, dry the clothes, fold the clothes. You can put the clothes up. All right, so what's right. another um, acts of service? Um, I would say um, just doing things that you know that your spouse likes. Amen, amen. Thank amen. you, babe. Yes, yes, yes. So let me say this. No one likes to be forced to do anything. I know I don't want to be forced to do anything. Again, we're talking about doing things with a cheerful heart doing things unto the Lord and doing things in love. Nobody wants to be forced to do anything. And so that's why we share the scripture of Colossians 3.23. Remember, it may not be your love language, but if it is your spouse's love language, why not fuel them up, refuel them with their love language yeah. of acts uh -huh. of service. Service, amen, amen. Another thing that I think is imperative for us to know is that there are times when one spouse serves but the other spouse does not serve. Let us be very careful and sensitive. That's why, I said, again, I have to be redundant that we're doing it with a cheerful heart, we're doing it in love, and that we're doing it unto the Lord. We don't want to serve our spouses with acts of service that that's their love language out of resentment, mm. out of fear, oh, nice. yeah. out of guilt. Mm -hmm. Like nobody wants to be forced and nobody wants to be bullied to do anything. And so let us find out what that love language is, if it's acts of service, and let us fulfill it for our spouses. Wow, that's Pastor, that's we went a little bit over our time, but we want to thank you for your time. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, thank you for your time this evening. We appreciate the fact that you stopped by our channel to look at Marriage Mondays. We pray that something we said has enlightened you, the, the resolve that you have to make your marriage work, to strengthen your marriage. And listen, this love language game is strong. We want our love language game to be strong because we want to feed our spouses. The number one thing we want to remember out of all this, you're the chef. You're the one feeding. Mm. your spouse. You don't want another mm. chef to feed your spouse what they like to eat. Do you? Exactly. So because you have your apron on and your chef's hat, get in that metaphoric love kitchen and start cooking. Amen? If this message has inspired you in any way, it is because of the love that Jesus Christ has for you, yeah, for your you family, know. and for what he wants to come forth from you and your family. And so if this message has meant anything to you, I want you to dig deep and ask if you know the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you don't, ask him right now to come in. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to come into your marriage yes. and make your marriage work. Amen? Amen. Well, that's all the time that we have for this evening. We want to encourage you. Go do the language that you know works best. And also we want to remind you that these Love languages are taken from Gary Chapman, the author of the five love languages. Absolutely. So while y'all know what we do here, we love you, but more importantly, God, God loves, loves you. you. Work at your marriage, make it work. God bless you. God bless you.